Hi, this is Annie Grace, and I am the author of This Naked Mind, and today I have a great question. I'm answering readers' questions, and today I have a great question from Julia. She says, Annie, what is the link between drinking and binge eating? And it's really interesting because there's a very intense link, actually, between binge drinking and binge eating, and just alcohol abuse in general and binge eating. So it doesn't necessarily even have to be binge drinking. So Alcohol problems are actually five times more common in people who binge eat than in the general population. In fact, 50% of people who binge eat abuse alcohol. So why does this happen? There's a number of theories, and um, I'm gonna give you basically three theories. Some of them are somewhat similar, but these are the most prevalent theories that are out there. And if you're doing both of these things, one of these will probably feel true for you, and you'll be like, oh, that's it. But the truth is that the same mechanisms that you can use to overcome drinking of really you know, changing your thinking about it and foundationally changing your, your life and uh, your ability to relate to yourself in a more healthy way will absolutely also help with binge eating. So the first theory is this struggle between desire and discipline. And this theory goes something like this. We have built inside of us this forbidden fruit syndrome. And so when we restrict something in our lives, and women often restrict food for all sorts of you know, social reasons and body image reasons and, and self-hatred reasons, et cetera, then we are much more prone to overindulge later because willpower only lasts so long, it's finite. And ultimately when we feel restricted, 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 then we feel like we need that indulgence. And this happens with food, certainly. So if you're on a diet, it, studies correlate being you know strict dieting, strict um, adherence to what goes in your mouth, very much focused on body, has a very strong correlation with binge eating because you feel like you've done so good. And then finally, it's like a volcano, it explodes and you just have to put everything you can in your mouth. You don't even have control. It feels completely out of your control because guess what? You've been doing it for so long that the, it's gotten so tight, it's finally just broke. The same thing can happen with alcohol and there's so much with binge drinking. Binge drinkers will often tell me, well, you know, I don't really have a problem because I didn't drink every day. You know, and it's funny, ironically, because people who drink every day, like I did, also think, Oh, well, I didn't really have a problem because I never binge drank. Like I never was the one who was, you know, drunk on the sidewalk after the bar closed. So like both both sides of that justification is true. But absolutely the same thing is happening where you are, you know, addicted to alcohol because if you're binge drinking and you're drinking in that excess, there is an addiction going on in your brain. So every single day, say you don't drink Monday through um, Thursday and then Friday and Saturday, you kind of go crazy every single day, you are having subconsciously those thoughts of deprivation and feeling like you're missing something and you're really white knuckling it. And then Friday and Saturday come and boom, again, you know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, the pressure explodes and you tend to binge drink. So that's theory number one about this really interesting and very direct correlation between binge drinking and binge eating or drinking and binge eating. Theory number two is just the idea that both of these activities numb out trauma. So it can be childhood trauma. It can just be a lot of stress in your life, but alcohol is actually an anesthetic. So it numbs you. So when you drink it, when you're dealing with stress, you know, it gives you a pleasurable response, which your brain learns to do more of. And then with eating large, large, large amounts of food, some of the same pathways in the brain are triggered in a very bizarre way, but being overly satiated means that you actually numb out. And that's what binge eaters report. They report actually going into some sort of a trance and it's it's very um, relieving and numbing. And so all those same characteristics happen with kind of going on an alcohol binge or an eating binge, which is really interesting. And then the third theory is very much tied up with the first theory, but the idea here is that you overindulge to fulfill a need of your ego. And this happens subconsciously. So basically the theory here is that we all, you know, we need to feel kind of um, loved or appreciated or, you know, we need to feel like our place in the world is secure. It's, it's the most innate human need to feel loved and protected, right? And so if you are going through your life and you don't feel this in any other place in your life, or you feel very little love and protection in other places in your life and connection, then one of the things that you'll do is overindulge yourself. And somehow things have gotten twisted in your brain where you think 
eating huge amounts of food at once is that overindulgence. And that feels like, oh, okay, somebody is taking care of me, even if it's just me, even if it's just on occasion. And even if I totally regret it later, there's something in your brain that triggers that um, need to take care of yourself because you're not doing it probably in other areas of your life. And a lot of binge eaters have a lot of self-hatred. And so all of a sudden you're breaking through that self-hatred. You're doing something that your brain is perceiving subconsciously to be, oh, okay, I'm going to love and take care of myself through binge eating or binge drinking. Neither of those things obviously are doing that, but because you're not loving and taking, taking care of yourself otherwise, it comes across in this way. And then, so those are the three main theories. Maybe one of those will resonate with you and that says makes sense. But the, the hopeful news is that the same mechanisms that you use to overcome, you know, you're thinking about drinking and really build the foundation of talking to yourself in a really nice way and starting to really love, respect, and care for yourself. Those same mechanisms help, whether it's binge eating or binge drinking. And then the final thought, and this is something that can happen when you are a binge eater and a drinker, which again, a huge amount of people who binge eat binge drink or drink too much is that you can actually have blackout binges. So that's where you've drank to the point where you're in a blackout. And then in that blackout, you eat, but you don't have any recollection of it. The only, the only kind of evidence of it is waking up the next morning and all the food is strewn around, or you've got, you know, cookie containers, pizza boxes, whatever your binge of choice is. And so blackout binging, I just wanted to say it's a really real thing. And um, if you're drinking to blacking out at all, one of the things you should know about blacking out is the more you drink to blackout, the more easily it will be to blackout in the future. So if this is happening to you, I would say definitely, you know, get, get my book or get some other resource to get back in control of that because that will really help with the binge eating as well. So it was a great question. Thank you so much. And again, this is Annie Grace. Have a wonderful day. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.